Hey y'all, it's me, Kevy. So August is over. I got my July wrap up done over a month late, but hey, I'm back again with my wrap up for August. I only finished nine books in August, which is kind of low for me. And there were quite a few I did not enjoy. It was a hell of a slump, but let's take a look at what I read during that slump. Starting with Garb August. Going into Garb August, I knew I wasn't going to participate in the entirety of the event, so rather than trying to choose books for every single category, I wanted to choose just one book that was supremely filthy. I went with 120 Days of Sodom. This is vintage trash, having been written in the 1700s while the Marquis de Sade was imprisoned in Bastille. This is the most disgusting book I've ever read in my life. It is vile. I would never, ever recommend this book to anybody under any circumstances, except for Scott, because that would be funny. <laughs> but no, seriously. Stay away from this book. 120 Days of Sodom is about these four wealthy Frenchmen who are seriously depraved, and they decide to orchestrate a four-month-long retreat where they can enjoy all the debauchery they could dream of. In preparation for this event, they hire people to kidnap 150 underage boys and girls, and then the four men choose their favorite eight of each, fucking the rest of them and tossing them into the streets. The unlucky chosen few get to accompany the friends to an isolated castle where they will be living for the next four months. Other members of the party include the men's wives, who are each a daughter of one of the other men. Oh, and they swap wives interchangeably. And then there are the four sex workers, who will each spend an entire month narrating 150 deviant sexual acts, which they either participated in or witnessed. The final of the four orators is dedicated entirely to erotic acts of murder. So yeah, for 120 days, these men and their victims listen to these women's stories and have all the gross fucking child sex and incest and whatever gross ass fucking shit. Oh, the shit. So much shit. Way too much shit. While this book went into so many unfathomable sexual acts, it spent way too long focusing on scat. There have to have been other activities the author could have conceived of without relying so heavily on feces. I hope you've gotten the picture by now, but yeah, this book is awful. It's gross, it's violent, it's disturbing. It's like if the Saw films were compiled into a book, but then they added people coming on children in every scene. I seriously regret reading this book and hope y'all will heed my warning and stay far, far away from it. The other book I read for Garb August is Carsick by John Waters. Y'all know I am obsessed with John Waters, one of my all-time favorite directors. So queer, so camp, and so completely filthy. He is the king of filth. He's written quite a few books at this point, and while Karsik didn't sound the most interesting to me, it was the only one that I had found on sale. So that's the one that I have and was able to read. Karsik is John Waters documenting his experience hitchhiking across the country in 2012. Maybe that sounds interesting to other people, but it did not appeal to me one bit. Being written by John Waters is the only reason I picked it up. I became much more interested when I read the introduction and realized this book is written in three parts, two of which are fiction. Part one is a fictionalized account of the best possible hitchhiking journey he could have. Then part two is the worst possible, followed by part three, which is what really happened. I thought the combination of fiction and nonfiction in a single book was so interesting, and it made the nonfiction portion of this book easier to engage with because he'd already familiarized the reader with the format during parts one and two. I loved part one so so much. There were so many beautiful stories in there, like a tryst with a demolition derby driver who gets hard-ons from collisions. <laughs> and then there was a chapter that literally made me cry, where he was reunited with Edith Massey, who had faked her death in order to go back to living a quiet, peaceful life. Edith Massey is one of my favorite people who has ever lived. One of my biggest inspirations. So the thought of her still being around after all of this time made me so happy I could not contain it. Part two was rough. I mean, obviously, because it's about the worst possible things that could happen to him on his hitchhiking trip. 
But like, it was so rough I had to skip the last few chapters. I just, I felt like I just forced myself to read all of this awful torture porn over in Sodom. And I really didn't want to read about this stuff happening to my beloved John Waters. So yeah, I eventually gave up on part two and went on to the real deal. This part was lovely. And the plot was surprisingly captivating. The relationships he formed along the way were wonderful. And I loved all the chapters with Corvette Kid. I wasn't feeling Carsick going into to it, but I'm so glad I read it. This was such a beautiful, wholesome, charming, and trashy book, and one I would definitely recommend. Outside of Garb August, Net Galley Reads, and Audiobooks, I only read one other book in August, and that was Murder Must Advertise by Dorothy L. Sayers. This was a buddy read with Sandy at Miss Reads A Lot. Her and I read the first book in the Lord Peter Whimsy series back in January, and Fuck, it was awful. But she's got two more books from this series on her thousand and one book list, so we decided to give Murder Must Advertise a try. Y'all, I hated this book so much. The opening chapter was so confusing, introducing too many characters and voices and plot things, and just talking about so much irrelevant shit I just could not follow. I gotta say, I really, really hate the way Sayers formats a mystery. In Whose Body and this one, you pick up on all the vibes of who you're supposed to think did it, and waiting and waiting for the twist to drop and reveal who really did it, and then they're just like, oh yeah, the most obvious person really did do it. That's just so fucking stupid. It's like she misses the entire point of writing a fucking mystery novel. Oh, and then they kept going on and on and on about horse racing and dog racing and betting and those kinds of things. And you're like, okay, how is this going to be incorporated into the twist? And the connection was so fucking weak that it really did not need to be there at all. And there were too many chapters written in dialect that were just completely illegible. The bitch is so pretentious too. Like, just listen to this. I obtained an introduction to her through what the great public, seduced by the unfortunate example of that incomparable vulgari satur, Charles Dickens abominably calls a mutual friend. What kind of posh ass? I think I'm so much smarter than you. And I'm gonna make sure you fucking know that as bullshit as that. What a fucking bitch. I hate her books, and I'm glad that she's not around to write any more of them. I read three NetGalley books this month, which will be featured in a separate video. But just so y'all know, they were Investigators, Heist and Seek, Other People's Secrets, and Great LGBTQ Plus Speeches empowering voices that engage and inspire. Stay tuned for those full reviews. One of the essays featured in the previous book I mentioned was by Essex Hemphill, and I loved his speech so much, I immediately went out and found a copy of his poetry and essay collection ceremonies. I'm going to give this book its own video full of readings, so be on the lookout for that. I listened to two audiobooks in August. The first was Wrath Goddess Sing by Maya Dean. I decided to listen to this one because it was narrated by a Twitter mutual, Cat. It's a retelling of the Trojan War where Achilles is a trans woman. I really loved all the trans aspects and the whole thruple situation she had going on with her mentor and his wife. And Kat did such a great job narrating it as well. Unfortunately, I ended up DNFing it a little over halfway through just because I realized as much as I love the narrator, I just don't give a damn about war and battle stories. And having a trans protagonist really doesn't change that. The parts between the war stuff were lovely, but there were just too many battle scenes for me to want to keep listening to it. The last book I listened to in August was Stephen King's Mr. Mercedes. After DNFing Wrath Goddess Sing, it took me forever to figure out what to listen to next. I spent like a week and a half listening to nothing because I was just so indecisive till I was eventually like, just choose some Stephen King. Mr. Mercedes is one I'd been really interested in for a while, so I decided to check it out. I was immediately sucked into the story. King did such a superb job opening this novel, getting you invested in these characters, dropping some severe foreshadowing, and then BAM, they're dead. Oh, that was just wonderful. I really liked the character of Bill Hodges, the retired detective determined to catch the Mercedes killer. But the characters I most responded to were his sidekicks, Jane 
Amy, Jerome, and Holly. A lot of the book was from the perspective of the Mercedes killer himself, and I wasn't too fond of his chapters. I get that King wanted to make him unlikable, but there are ways for a white man to write an unlikable character without using the n-word so fucking much. What the fuck? Uh, knock that shit out. There was also a lot of really unpleasant incest stuff in his chapters, which I'd already had too much of in that other book. I get that the point of this novel is to show the hero and the villain in conversation and the ways their actions influence each other, but like, except for the parts where Mr. Mercedes was directly responding or reacting to one of Bill's messages, I really didn't like his chapters. Outside of that, I really did enjoy Mr. Mercedes and immediately followed it up with the sequel, Finders Keepers, which I'll be discussing in next month's wrap-up. So there you have all the books I read in August. It was not my best reading month, but I'm happy to report I've finally gotten out of that slump I was stuck in, and we'll have a lot more to share in September. How was y'all's reading in August? Which of these books did you want to check out? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and if it pleases and sparkles, I'll see you in the next video. Mwah! <laughs>